Hello! Why do I do this with my hands? Hi guys. Um, today we are working on attaching the skirt and finishing the hem. It was a really fun process. I definitely learned a lot because um, this is the first time I have actually made a court gown. Um, everything that I have made before has been like lower middle class garb that's like linen and easy to wear and front laced and all that pretty stuff. So um, this has been a really fun project to kind of just learn on. So stay tuned. I am going to preface this by saying that I did a lot of the hand sewing work when I was lazy and just wanted to lay in bed all day, so not a lot of that got filmed, but I will still give you updates on what that process was. The entire skirt was cut out by using the measurements that are found in the Patterns of Fashion book. Um, specifically to the Eleanor de Toledo burial gown. The only thing that I did to alter that was to add five inches onto the hem. I'm a fairly tall person and I just wanted to make sure that I had plenty of length in that hem because uh, the last thing I wanted to do was for that to come up short. When everything was cut out, I sent all of the raw edges through the serger and then pieced together the front and back panels. After that was all finished, then I measured where I wanted the slits to end on the front and back panels. So that way I had a mark on where to stop sewing when I sewed the side seams together. Because I am a ridiculously impatient person and I was super excited, I went ahead and measured all the pleats and pinned them onto the bodice. That way I could get an idea of what the finished dress would look like. Okay, so I just put the fur coat over the silver dress and like the light from my window is blowing it out. Oh, that kind of helped. There you go, now you can see the pattern on the dress. When I cut the dress, I cut it with the train per the instructions in the Janet Arnold book. But I think it looks kind of funny to have the train poking out underneath the coat that doesn't have a train. So, I'm going to cut the train off and I'm going to use what is the train to make a pair of silver sleeves. So that way if it's too warm, I don't have to wear the fur sleeves, but I can still have a fancy pair of sleeves. So I just cut a bunch of bias strips to go around the top edge to close up the side back holes and to um, help me hem the dress. That way everything is finished and pretty, and then the bias tape will help give the needed volume for the pleats to look right. I sewed and underlined stitched the bias tape onto the waist seam, as well as on the side back slits, just to finish those edges really nicely and make it really nice and clean. Okay, so I went ahead and tacked that down with itty bitty whip stitches 
and it's mostly invisible on the other side. Um, I just need to give it a good press. Um, I'm really excited <laughs> about how these turned out. So the next step is to fold down the bias tape on the waistband and attach it, figure out how I want the pleats and then attach it to the skirt. I mean, attach the skirt to the bodice. So that's what I'm gonna be working on. Adding the bias tape onto the waistline of the skirt really helped with giving it a little bit more volume than if I would have just left it with the fashion fabric. In the future, I will probably use a thicker fabric like a wool coating or even a really thin cotton batting just to give it a little bit more volume. But for this first go around in this dress, it worked out perfect and I love the result. Okay, so the back's the easy part. I think I'm gonna go ahead and whip stitch this down um, and then work on the front. Pro tip, always wax your thread. It'll make it stronger and it won't tangle as much. So the time has come. We are downstairs in my front room where I have the space and I'm cutting off the train. So I think I'm going to start it. Just have a baby train on it. Yeah, that'll work. The leftover fabric from the trim ended up not being enough to make a pair of sleeves out of, so I cut two inch wide strips to make the decorative trim that would go along the hem of the skirt. When all of my strips were cut out, I folded them in half and then sewed them onto the bias tape that I had cut out earlier to finish the hem with. I am so excited we are finishing the hem of this dress today. I have purposely been putting it on, keeping it on my dress form so that way I see it and it's not put away and I don't forget about it like all the other miscellaneous projects that need to get done. Um, I do need to hem the front of it up about four to five inches. I'm probably gonna go with five because if it's just off the ground, it's not going to bother me. But if it's brushing the ground and I step on it at all, that's going to really bother me. I'm gonna have it up five inches um, and then taper that from like the center point, taper it down and around. And um, that way I still get the full length that I'm looking for and I don't accidentally hem it too short because that is my fear. It just needs to be short enough so that way when I walk I don't trip. Um, we're going to do that. We're going to attach the 
fancy edging that I'm it's gonna end up getting clipped because that was a detail that I read about in the Jenna Arnold book and absolutely loved. But we're going to attach the horse hair onto the hem. So that's, that's what we're doing today. Once everything was sewn on to the hem with my machine, I then whip stitched the horse hair to the skirt. I did really small fine stitches and I tried really hard not to let my stitches go all the way through the fabric so that way it would be an invisible hem from the front. So do you ever get to a point in a project where you're just like, this is the last step, I'm so excited, it's done! But then it's not because you made a critical error that you didn't notice earlier. That's what happened with the hem of this dress. So when, when I cut the train off, I forgot to account for the fact that the train actually starts on the front sides of the garment and so I just cut the train off the back and I thought it would be okay. <sighs> Not okay. So now we get to fix it. So for reference, this is how not okay it is. This is the front of the hem which is just off the ground which is what I wanted. And then this is the side of the hem which needs to be floor length, but it's not by a lot. Um, and then the back is floor length as well. I'm pulling out one of my fantastic tailor tricks to fix it. And you can't really see it, but I'm basting where the floor line is because I don't want to put any markers on this. And because the chalk that I have is just gonna rub off before I get to it. Since it's all on my dress form and I have all the foundation garments and everything in there, I'm just kind of feeling for like where that hem needs to be. This is just gonna give me an approximate so that way I have something to go off of when I take it off the form and then like continue on. Okay, so I finished the hem. It is all nice and even. I didn't film any of that because it was just a bunch of me seam ripping and then repeating steps, um, but it's definitely something that I wanted to include because not every project goes perfectly and it's important to know that. I have been sewing for most of my life and I run into problems all the time. So if you are sewing something and you hit a hiccup, Take a break, go get some ice cream, eat some food, make a treat, I don't care what you do. Just walk away from it, give yourself some time to brainstorm how to fix it, and then go back and fix it when you're not frustrated and angry with the project. That way you're not going to make more mistakes. Best advice I can give. But this means that the dress is done. I am so excited that the next step is to make the sleeves, and so I will see you next time with that process. Bye guys!